How are you, Bill? I'm. You know what? I'm really good. Why is my picture not working? That's weird. I'll wait. Did I? Oh, there we go. Oh, it didn't ask me. That's weird. It didn't ask me if I wanted to use video that time. It just went right into the. So. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, there's been some updates, so I don't. Oh. Know. Yeah, I, I saw that when I logged in earlier because I was trying to set the light. And see my shirt. Glug. Yes. Uh, I just got off a Zoom call with Jimmy Pardo. Oh. <laughs> That's sweet. why I had to ask for the. You mean this guy? That guy right there. Awesome. He's so if you're a platinum premium member, they're whatever their new thing is. Um, you got a shirt. You got uh, not this shirt. This is a different shirt that, of Jimmy's, but um. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, there's a. I got a pin, a little uh, thing for a, like jacket or whatever, and you got a phone call, and they sent out a questionnaire saying, "Hey, if you want this phone call or not, and give us your information." And I was like, uh, "It doesn't need to be a phone call. I mean, that's fine. I get it. I see Jimmy at the shows. I get to talk to him. This was 15 minutes that I got to talk to Jimmy, though. So that was that was really cool. But anyway, um. He uh, started, did, started doing the first set of them like a couple weekends ago, and somebody suggested a Zoom meeting. And so he started doing those, and he was having such a good time. I texted and said, hey, or I emailed back and said, hey, I don't remember what I said, but I'd be up for a Zoom call. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the timing just worked out that it was this morning at 1040. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> So oh, I understand, but I appreciate that. How oh, are you yeah. doing otherwise? Everything. So that okay? was, that's, that was the big reason. That was the big reason. Why yeah. You couldn't, uh, yeah, we usually record a little earlier. And, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I said this to Bill last time. I'm, I don't want to be a boss and I definitely, <laughs> so I'm definitely not a podcast boss. So, well, yeah. I get that, but it's also like timing. Yeah. 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 No, but uh, you, we're considerate to each other. It's not like, it's not like you just don't show up or you don't respond or yeah, you don't go, you don't ghost me, Bill. You've I try not to. <laughs> I'm too big to ghost. You can see me from just about everywhere. Glug, what's the, I'm sorry, I don't know the reference. <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, it better be good the way you're laughing. It better be good. Well, it's funny to me. So <laughs> I, I can't remember how it first started with Jimmy was talking about masturbating. And he said he saw some woman or whatever or saw something, Glug. That was where Glug came from. I may have heard that episode because I don't listen to I don't listen to everyone. Right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, this joke goes back years. Uh, oh, okay. So maybe that's I probably just forgot it. And yeah, and so it was just but well, they so, were trying to. And speaking of, it is National Masturbation, Masturbation Month. Yes, it is. Yes. Lily von Stupp has been putting up nice, very nice pictures for that on. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. I, one, one post I responded, month, I've been celebrating my fifth decade. <laughs> month. <laughs> and her response, which was great, is, is, well, you know, it's just a month. All the other times is just training. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Oh. Um, I, I wrote down a few topics that I wanted to get into. I just, okay. I, just, I was just curious about them. Um, one was guns. Yeah. Are you a gun owner? Yes. Oh, you are. Okay. Yes. Uh, were you raised with guns? Uh, I got a BB gun when I was, I don't know, 10, eight, something like that. And you didn't uh, my put dad, your eye my, out. <laughs> what's that? You didn't put your eye out. I did not put my eye out. I did get uh, the uh, proverbial Ralphie kickback, though, at one point. Okay. Where we were, my dad built a little, you know, some two by fours and a tarp, and he made a little range for us to shoot at in the backyard. And I don't know, it must have hit the wood on one of the shots, and it ricocheted and came back and hit the eave ab above the house. Or maybe it was the glass on the back, uh, the back of the house. I can't remember what it was, but my brother and I were, you know, 
fooling around, but not fooling around. We, we weren't, uh, what would you say? Pointing the gun at inappropriate places, but we were probably like shooting fast or doing something like that. So it wasn't right in the soft part of the tarp, which again, it was a BB gun. So, um, but that's where you learn how to not do stupid things. And it, yeah, one of them kicked back and hit, it was either the wood or the glass. Didn't break oh. anything. Oh, well, that's cool. And you, and you got, and didn't break you. Didn't break, didn't break us. No. Yeah. But it's yeah. just like, oh, that, yeah, that does come back. Yeah. That, but I just, I, for me personally, it was like, I didn't have a gun for many years. And then I got a, a, a group of friends who do have guns and they were, they would say, Hey, let's go to the range. And I'm like, I don't have a gun. Well, you can shoot one of ours. And I always liked guns, but I didn't have people to go to the range with. And now I had people to go to the range with. So I bought a gun. Okay. So it's more of a sporting thing for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I don't hunt. You don't, I really don't hunt. And well, I mean, do you, do you look at it as like a protection item too? You know, I was thinking about this. I've thought about this a couple times. Yeah. Yes and no. It's not. I keep it in a safe. So it's, it's generally speaking, it's out of the way. Um, I, I don't think we should all be open carrying, if that's what you mean. Okay. For in, in my house, mm -hmm. if something goes down, maybe. But really, what's going to go down in my house? I, I, I mean, yeah, there, there are people whose homes get broken into and there's strong arm robberies and there's all kinds of stuff. The likelihood is not very great. Okay. Yeah. So you feel safe in your, in your area. I feel safe in my area. Yeah. In, in this area, especially. That's great. Yeah. So it's, I, mean, it, I, it, I live in a suburby area mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not saying that that can't happen, but yeah, I feel rel relatively safe. Uh, my only experience with guns has been through like toys Oh right, and video games. Yeah, I uh, I think my I think my dad owned one, mm -hmm. uh, but he never showed it to me. He wasn't a hunter. I think it was more of a protection thing. Oh okay. And I I remember because he had he had bouts with depression. Oh wow, and, and that yeah. type of stuff. And I the only reason why I found out that he had one was that his I overheard his friend say, "Yeah, we we took the gun just in case." Uh, oh wow, but. Uh, that never, that never occurred. Like he never, as far as I know, there were no kinds of uh, like suicide attempts or anything like that. Good. But that was the only reason why I knew that he had one. He, never, he had, yeah. Yeah. I was involved in one of those. Attention. I'm sorry. I, I was involved in one of those where a friend was. The circumstances. Had, okay. Yeah. Who had a, who had guns and he was mm -hmm. being irrational and we had to, we took him to another friend's house who was also a gun guy and said, just, Hold on to these until we figure out what's going on. And uh, yeah. So you took them to another house that had guns, <laughs> but they were well, locked up. <laughs> they were locked up. They weren't as easily accessible. Yeah, but, they yeah. weren't. And it was like, well, the other option is you give them to the police. You can give them to the police and then the person has to go down there. And, and we didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the guy who had guns, his, his father was a police officer or actually a, a highway patrol officer. So he had grown up around guns and he yeah. shot and he, I don't he know. Was he was responsible. Yeah, oh, he was responsible. Yeah. And so we knew he would know how to take care of them until we could get them back to our roommate or he, well, the roommate knew him as well. So we told him where they were. And once he calmed down, but we did, we said, we're not giving them to you until you straighten up. I don't, I don't want to pick on any one state cause I don't know any, everybody else's laws. Mm -hmm. Um, I know California kind of goes over the top with some of the things that they're doing, but I think some of the other states aren't going far enough. So, um, like this open carry crap, come on. That's, that's a bunch of hooey. That's a Texas what? thing, right? Well, Texas, Alabama or uh, Arizona, I think too. Arizona. Um, where did they just have, they just took over the state capital in, was it Minnesota or 
Michigan, somewhere like Michigan. that, or Michigan. Yeah. And those yahoos are walking around with, I, I, come on, you're just trying to intimidate people. Being confrontational. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You want someone to say something just so you can intimidate them. And that's just stupid. But, uh, no, I, I, I mean the country as a whole because this is a mental, to me, it's a mental health thing. That's where kind of where it starts. And if you can't get people help or if you can't have people tested or if you can't, if someone's having a bad day, they can't go see someone about it unless they have health insurance. And even then, does their health insurance cover mental health? So that's one thing. Um, the other is the, the NRA is just, they're not a, they're not a good organization anymore. They, they used to be about hunting and gun safety. And now they're just, a a, a block for, I don't, I don't know if it's gun companies or what, but they have so many lobbyists. Yeah. Well, it's all so tied in. People, yeah, so many people on the payroll, even straight up, not even lobbyists. They have straight senators and Congress people that are on the payroll, basically. Mm -hmm. And they they just blockade things that are maybe they're not quite common sense, but they're for the betterment of society. And we live in a society. We don't. We're not. You know, all these. Yahoo's in there. Oh, take away my freedom. Uh, your freedom's not being taken away. You never had it. This is a republic. We live under a set of rules. This is just a change to one of the rules for a short time. Suck it up. Oh, I'm a rugged individualist. No, you're an asshole. You're not a rugged individualist unless you came here on a horse or a burrow that has been passed down generation to generation from your rugged individualist forefathers. Because if you drove in a car on a road at any point to get here, you're not a rugged individualist. If you bought food, if you got gas, if you did anything besides ride your burrow into town from and after a, a meal caught and killed by your own two hands, you're not a rugged individualist. I'm sorry, you're right. not. You're not you off the grid. Society. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a bunch of hooey. Do you, how do you feel about certain weapons being restricted, like certain guns? Uh, well, straight up automatic weapons, nobody needs a straight up automatic weapon. They are fun to shoot. I have shot one before. They are a lot of fun to shoot. There's a couple of gun stores ranges in Vegas. I'm sure there's other places too, but I've just been to Vegas. And you can go in there and for 50 to a hundred dollars, you can rent an, a fully automatic weapon. And I think it was 50 rounds when I did it um, and shoot at their range, but they're set up for it. Yeah. Well, and there's no real restrictions to that. There's no qualifications that you need or not to get in. Oh, I think you have to be 21, 18 or 21 to, to get into the, the range. Okay. Just age, just an age restriction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, because, so there's, there's a, a, a training officer or whatever range safety officer, I guess is what they're called. A range safety officer, someone from the store who shows you how to do it, shows you the weapon, how to fire it, how to, you know, pull back the, the charging handle or what actually they didn't even do that. They did, they did all of that. So the, when we, when we went and it may be different in different places, but when we went, we literally got in a position, had the rifle at our shoulder. He put the magazine into the rifle, pulled the charging handle, stepped back around us and tapped us on the shoulder and said, go. So we didn't load it. We didn't charge it. The only thing we did was pull the trigger. So as far as restrictions, I don't see that you need a lot of restrictions there. Yeah. I think that, I think that's fun amusement, mm -hmm. but it's not like we could leave with, with that, uh, rifle. Right. My buddy's, uh, shot a Thompson 
the old Tommy Tommy guns from the move the move the. Why well, again? I think of, of those type of guns in video games because the, the oh mafia, right 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 games, uh, which Mafia One is being remade and being is released it? in August. Nice. Okay. And it's oh, that's a, right. Yeah. That was one of the movie. That was one of the games you told me that I should play. Right, Mafia. Mafia yeah, Mafia Two. Uh, Mafia yeah, One Mafia is, two. is is pretty old, but as far as as far as I know, as far as I, I've been hearing, is that they re, they rebuilt it from the bottom up with right. uh, new new cutscenes, new storylines, de- definitely new graphics. It's it's on a brand new engine, so it's not it's not the same like two thousand and two game. You know, right. It's going to be, uh, you know, a 2020 game. That'll be cool. Which I'm looking forward to. And I've, <laughs> I've killed thousands. I've shot thousands <laughs> in that respect. So, yeah. So, I mean, but, but so, yeah. So my thing at that is it can be fun. Uh, we don't, the average person doesn't need an automatic weapon, in my opinion. And no. when you start getting into some of these uh, AKs and, and knockoff type is I I don't like it's it's sort of the the pit bull thing with dogs mm-hmm. and like every generation it seems like some other dog becomes the dangerous dog mm-hmm. and then there's rules against those dogs and if you have a homeowners association you can't have that dog or if you live in a building yeah. you know with other people you know you can't have that kind of dog it's not the dogs. It's always the people. Mm-hmm. It's well, almost it's, always the people. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the person using them as a weapon. Yeah. And so, and in my opinion, that's sort of the thing with guns. Now, do people need those kinds of guns? No. And anybody who says, Oh, I hunt with this. Bull crap. No, they're for you people. Hunting. They're for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. That, that gun was hunting. made for a specific reason mm-hmm. and hunting was not it. Yeah, and I thought about this. Most targets, most targets are, why are most targets the shape of a person? <laughs> I don't think most of them are. A lot of them are. Well, you would, you the could speak targets. more to that than I can because I've never been at a shooting range. But like all the, all the no, examples, yeah. like, you know, you see that, that you see that stereotypical one of the mean guy yeah. holding a gun exactly. at you, you know. Exactly. But it's a lot of fun to go to the range and shoot trap, skeet, uh, birds, uh, the clay pigeons. That's what a word I was looking for. And it's Paul. Sk- <laughs> what? Paul. Well, exactly. <laughs> I didn't know. They actually do that. <laughs> yeah. So. I've They're been- actually saying Paul. <laughs> Paul. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the the range that I go that's to. That's why I've never been there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll point why towards me. Follow me. What? Yeah. What? Uh, no, actually, the the way the the thing is set up at where I go, um, it just reacts to a sound. So you you have to be really quiet on the and there's five shooting positions, so you can be as, as many as five of you out there, and everybody has a little. Uh, it's kind of a speaker microphone thing, whatever. And so that's, what's picking up the noise when you say pull. Well, if you start talking, even just any noise sets off the machine. So you have to be real quiet when you're up there. Hmm. Otherwise it's just going to keep throwing out clay pigeons and you're just wasting stuff at that point. Yeah. I do. Do you have to buy a certain amount? No, you just you pay for the round. It's oh okay. The, the time, the, the gun range pay mm-hmm. at least the way this one works. This gun range you pay for the round, and it's a, a round is twenty five shots, pigeons basically. Okay. Right. So and I'm I've never bought them, so I don't know how how inexpensive or expensive they are, but I think it's five bucks a round. But that's because I'm a member at this at this range. When I wasn't a member, I think it was eight or nine, something like that. So, what do you think about non-lethal ammunition? I don't know anything about it. I, I 
as far you, I'm a proponent, I, I believe in it. I think, hey, if it works, mm-hmm. I like the I like the uh, the military or military the police use of non lethal when when possible. So do you, you don't think, have to kill people. Do you think it'll hinder in a in a situation? Do you think it'll hinder your protection if you had a non lethal ammunition as opposed to you know a lethal one that you assume well, the other person has? So let me say. Well, first, let me say, never even thought about this. So this is all off the top of my head. Um, Non-lethal might be a way for people to open carry, or not open carry, to conceal carry, or or even open carry, but they have to have non-lethal rounds. Maybe that's the way that should work. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in my house, and you're in my house, and I don't want you to be in my house, and I've asked you to leave, no, no. I want it to be lethal. So in that sense, I, yeah, I do believe in the protection of your own property. Okay. Uh, I see the other side of that too, because like you said, there are mental health issues. There are, uh, oh, uh, con- confusion issues. Uh, there's penetration issues. You know, you don't want to shoot certain things. They'll go right through every wall in your house. So you need to be aware of that. But that's, that's, I think, the other side of the argument, maybe, or maybe part of my argument towards, towards that is there needs to be more training. There need, if you're, if you're going to get a gun, you should have a license. And maybe it's not like a driver's license, but there should be, you should be required to go through a certain amount of training and understanding of what's involved when you go, when you shoot something. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things I can't remember what the bill is called, but back in, I don't know, the early two thousands, maybe the nineties when, when they were trying to get a push for uh, background checks again, NRA sponsored one of the senators or congressmen, uh, when they were putting through this some bill or another, they said that the background checks could not be computerized. They couldn't be kept on, on computers for the safety and the privacy of the gun owner. So they have to keep that in a paper form. So there's a, exactly. So there's a building somewhere in Washington or Virginia or something like that now, and I don't know if this has changed since then. I have not heard of it changing, mm-hmm. but because we do a lot of this stuff online, when you go into the gun store to buy a gun, you have to get a background check. Well, yeah, and, 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 and I'm sure there's more classified information that's digital. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, that was the thing though. Yeah. They didn't, they wanted to make it as hard as possible to go into the, the, the database when there's a crime committed with a gun or when something happens with a gun, or if you do something dumb with your gun, now you, f- the police physically have to call this place or send them an email. And then somebody has to physically get up and walk down a hallway and start opening boxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I picture like the warehouse in Indiana Jones. Right. That's what I've been- <laughs> but it's an office building. Right. So there's people sitting at desks and in, the, in probably every hallway, around this place, there's just stacks and stacks of banker's boxes with paper, paper forms of when individuals purchased a gun. And there's no way to automate that. Is there, is there a tracking device in any guns now? Not that I know of. Mm-hmm. Like a, like a low jack type of thing or like a GPS? No, not, nothing that I know of. I mean, they, they individually are, stamped and have serial right. numbers yeah they have serial lost numbers or stolen yeah but <coughs> excuse me but as far as tracing them no nothing like that yeah i guess that would be of i don't know i guess that would be some kind of violation of your rights but i mean we all carry phones exactly and we're all we're all giving out our location constantly 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 so i wonder i wonder if that would be a way to 
to keep track of guns and their activity because we all have like, you know, health trackers. Right. And, uh, huh. I, yeah, that, that, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be up for that or against that. I honestly, I mean, as a responsible gun owner, I think you, you wouldn't have an issue with it unless you do. I don't, I don't know. No, it's, I, the responsible gun owner thing is, is, weird because everybody falls down everybody falls in different places on the the not security but your personal freedom of it and i haven't again you brought up that's a that's a good point i hadn't thought of it before and i don't know where i fall on that i don't know if i want somebody knowing well and it's not even knowing where i am it's knowing where the gun is why do you need to know where the gun is? It's recording everything like Alexa. It's right. Kind of, kind of that, that, that's, that's weird. Recording all your conversations. At least, at least just off the, off the top of my head, that's kind of weird. Cause I hadn't thought of that, mm-hmm. but, but like, but like you said, originally phones and now with Alexa and all and Siri and all this other stuff, we're constantly being recorded. I can hear Alexa in the other bill in the other room talking. Cause I said that too loud. Oh, you ha- oh, you have her. I have her. Well, wow. I have a Sonos speaker that has Alexa, and and she's over there saying, "What? I didn't hear what you said." <laughs> I have I have enough women's voices in my head. I don't need to. I don't need I don't need any digital forms. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That would... From my mom to my ex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting question though. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, maybe. I, I could see making that well, and then the technology becomes a thing. If it leaves the house, maybe like you have a, a home base where it doesn't track, like you're off the grid, which to a lot of people would say, Oh, it must be at their house, but you could probably set up one or two places as your home base and it doesn't track you. But maybe that's a thing for, I don't know. It, I can I can see the the argument of like why do you need to track me just because I have a gun on me, but I then I see the side of well because there's school shootings and all this stuff and that that's how those people got somewhere because they had a gun on them. So is somebody going to be watching me every time I leave the house with a gun or is it like I said there's a lot that goes into that and I don't think I can speak to my feelings of it uh, efficiently right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and as a final thing, I'd like to say guns are not going anywhere. No, it's too, it's it, there, in it, the U S it's too it's big of a too ingrained in our society. Yeah. Just, yes. just to interrupt you, sir, we have a very special guest. Uh Oh, our buddy. Who? Here she comes. Here she comes. Wait, wait for it. Aaron. Hi, Aaron. She's she's working out the, the kinks of sound and there she is. There she is. Hello. Hello. Hi guys. Hey. How are you today? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm good today. What great uh conversation did I miss so far? Oh, we were talking about murder and guns and uh, open carry <laughs> and uh suicide and okay. you know, all the so- fun things. So good thing I uh, was not in earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much time do you have to spend with us? Um, I have about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. So we'll get right. right into the this or that's. Cool. Oh, you have a Jimmy Pardo right behind you. I have a Jimmy Pardo too. I'll yeah. have to show you mine when we're done. Okay. Well, Bill had, Bill has some great great uh, news about Jimmy Pardo. Oh. I had I had to ask for this to be delayed an hour because I just spoke with Jimmy this morning. Oh, that's so cool. How's he doing? He's good. We did a Zoom call. Sweet. So he's doing very well. He's he's doing all the Zoom calls for the Platinum Premium members. Oh, cool. So yeah, that was that was fun. I bet. <laughs> do, do you have a? Is that a Muppet behind you? Who is that? <laughs> what? Turn around. It's not a joke. It's it's not a trick. Do you have a you have a dog, 
right? Oh, I do have a dog, yes. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Daisy. It looks like, oh, it's Daisy, okay. Hi, Hi Daisy. Daisy. Yeah. Hi, where's Rocky? Rocky's out with Bianca. Oh, okay. He's too hard to have around with any type of technology. He's, oh, okay, what, he'll be showing his butt? He'll like, be like in the chat and all sorts of things, hitting yeah. the reaction button. Is he named after the, the, the movie character? He is. Oh, he is? Yes. Oh, wow. His middle name is Adonis. Oh, awesome. Which is also named after the Rocky character from Creed. Does he respond to the Rocky theme? He does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because we trained him to. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Have you shot montages with him? <laughs> yeah, he's had some training montages, okay. some slow-mos. Yep. You got to you got to do that. You got to get the Rocky theme and, and do some <laughs> uh, uh, shoot a montage of him. Yeah. Yeah, running Have up him go up against steps. some Russian dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, instead of carrying a log, he carrying a giant chew bone or something. Well, he loves carrying sticks. He'll get the he'll get the most like practically branches and start running through the whole yard with this giant branch. Yeah. So that might be a good good part of the montage. I think that's ingrained in every dog. Yeah, it's fitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what do you say we get started? Sure. All right. Uh, why don't we let Aaron go first? Okay. Second, Bill, and I'll. I'll end it. <laughs> I'll be third. Okay. Okay. So the first one is, these are the bands. I'm talking about the bands, the cars or the neck. Okay. So when you first sent me the list, um, I appreciated that you put in parentheses bands. And I thought that you were both closer to my age than my parents' age, but I did have to consult my parents because I've never heard of either of these. <laughs> Wow. So my parents told me who they were. <laughs> and they told me to say, uh, oh, shoot, I forget. I think, I think my dad said to say the cars. <laughs> so, I had no idea. I literally have never heard of either of those bands. Really? So you, you don't, do you listen to 80s music at all? I mean, yeah. I'm wearing Punky Brewster t-shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I'm like, I grew up in the Mine 80s, the basically, but today, like, so. I've never heard of those bands. And um. I thought, well, I don't really want to, I don't like Google it because that's like straight up cheating. No, but I thought, well, let me just like have a conversation with my dad and see if he can tell me. And he, he said there that each of them has like a popular song, but I didn't know either of the songs that he named. So oh, I'm wow. like, oh, I'm a great contributor to this conversation. I don't even know the first one. No, well, first, first off, you can Google anything. You can okay. Google any, yeah, you, because I did a lot of research just so I can give an informative answer to your <laughs> questions, like, you know, strawberry shortcake, yeah. you know, the, the crucial, the crucial <laughs> strawberry shortcake. Yes. Um, well, The Knack, their most famous song is My Sharona. Yeah, I think I know that one. Yeah, you got to know My Sharona. Uh, not that you have to know it, but I, I'm saying. But I'm pretty sure it. I do. And the Cars have a lot of hits. Best I don't know. Friend, I didn't know any of them. Girlfriend. Hmm. Okay. Walking in stereo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just what I needed. Like oh, when yeah. I saw the list, I seriously was just like, wow. okay, great. Like I have nothing to contribute because I don't even know either of these bands. I've never heard of them. Like the Cars, that's like, I mean, I'm glad you put bands in parentheses because I was wondering like what I was even reading. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, you made me feel young, though. So thank you. So if you're dad, feel old. <laughs> Good Lord. So it's not even your answer; it's your dad's answer. Yes. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> that was your research. I, I like that. That was my research. I phoned a friend, my dad, my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, um, I'm gonna say cars, just because I knew I love my Sharona. That is literally the only song I know by the knack. So, and the cars, I had their albums, I had their tapes, I listened to them in the car. Uh, and uh, Rico Kasich just passed away a couple months ago, and I want to marry his uh, ex wife or widow. Uh, well, Lena Sova is still gorgeous. Um, She's is magic. it his ex wife or his widow? It's, well, they were separated. Okay. 
and they were legally separated. So, and he, but they did not get a divorce. I was just reading an article about that. He left her nothing in his will, cut her out of his will. Apparently he was wow. a uh, spiteful man or, or wow. very, very harsh anyway. And so, and then the article I was reading is saying that because they were not officially divorced, even though they were legally separated, they were not divorced and she was still living in the home. Um, she still may be entitled to one third of the property or the, yeah. So. Well, you can uh, ask her about that on your first date. I can. I <laughs> want to. Just go straight to it. Just bring it I right hope up. To. I hope to. <laughs> Cause she's still a beautiful, beautiful woman. And she's in the articles I've read anyway, she seems pretty intelligent, pretty uh, like with it kind of understands what was going on there and, and, and why she fell in love with him in the first place, but why they were no longer happy and had, had separated. So. And uh, this is the widow of the lead band member of the, of the cars. Yes. Who sang songs that you listen to on cassettes in your car. Yes. And in the movie Christmas vacation. Oh, and fast times. And oh, that's a famous one. Yeah. That's a famous scene. That is a famous. That's a, scene. That's a real guy scene. That's Phoebe <laughs> Cates walking out out of the pool topless scene. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Actually, the music the music in that scene is just um, it makes it. So, all right. Well, Paul. on that note, <laughs> I would have to agree with Bill. Yeah, the cars. I mean, my Sharona is one of those songs. You know how, like, you know how you like certain songs that you'll never get tired of, no matter how many times you hear it. My Sharona is one of those songs for me, because it's so unique with the beat and the vocals and just just that that song. And how do those vocals go? Oh, I would I wouldn't uh, crucify those vocals. That's, <laughs> that's so that's so sacrilegious. I tried. I tried. <laughs> That's so sacrilegious. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You could. You could Google. You can Google that. <laughs> uh, but the Cars have so many hits. I mean, just starting with that first album. Best friends, yeah. girl. Just what I needed. You know, <laughs> Aaron's Aaron's giving that look. I, I got nothing. I, I've never I, heard of either of those. You could be talking in Russian right now. I do. <laughs> you are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I. I I advise that you check out their music. And I know you've heard it. We know, we know you've heard it. Yeah. Probably. In yeah. Movies and just, just in general, listening to radio stations or, you know, 80, 80s flashbacks or whatever, stuff like that. They're just not on my mixtapes. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, okay. All right. Well, maybe. Um, or is, I don't think there's, because Stranger Things takes, takes place in the 80s. I, I don't think there's any cars in that, though. There might be. I don't remember if there is. I haven't seen Stranger Things. Me neither. Really? No. I'm sorry. We got to end this podcast right now. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, guys. Good to see you. Wow. Bye. No, 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 no. no. That's, That's the hard line, line in the sand right out. there. Wow. <laughs> it's all going to be. In, in fact, we got to start over, Bill. <laughs> From episode one, we got to start over. Like, right back you that. didn't give me the prerequisites. Oh, it, oh, that was void. Oh, okay. Well, if we start, if we start with episode one, that gives Aaron time to do a little Google research and she can figure out who these bands are. Yeah. <laughs> She's too young to or know. We'll just have her dad on. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. That's it. Maybe that's Seriously, you should just have my dad on. <laughs> or her dad and Rocky. It's, it's my dad is way cooler than I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, next no, one no, no. is the next, the next one is kettle bells or kettle chips. My first again. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, that one's easy for me because I, I'm a power lifter, so I don't really mess around with kettlebells and I love kettle chips. So I'll take all the carbs, all the calories, kettle chips. Hmm. Interesting. In interesting reason. I might use a kettlebell for like, like a light warm up, but I pretty much only use like, like a barbell and, and weights. I don't really use like the little, the little ones. Do you have a favorite flavor? Um, a barbell? <laughs> flavor barbell. <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. 
Um, no, I wouldn't say I have a favorite flavor. I, I definitely like all of them. I mean, I, I'll eat kettle chips anytime. Mm. Although I wouldn't eat them like you eat your Cheetos with ice cream or whatever. Like, no. Uh, oh, you don't like that mix? No. Point, point of order, sir. I tried. Did you? No go. <laughs> no. What, what kind no of go. Was with you on the burrito size egg roll? Yeah. I was with you on that one, but you lost me on Cheetos and my ice cream. Like, don't be messing with my ice cream like that. So. What, uh, what flavor ice cream? Um, I usually like any version of chocolate, like a Rocky Road or like any, anything that has the base of chocolate. But I, again, just like the kettle chips, I'm not turning down any flavor. Do you like a chocolate mint? Yep, yeah. I like chocolate oh, mint as well. Yep, love it. Have, Bill, what, what kind of ice cream did you try with the Cheetos? Um, what was it? It wasn't the strawberry cheesecake. I think it was a, a caramel something mix. It was a vanilla base mm -hmm. with, with caramel. And it, it was not horrible. <laughs> I just, it, there was no reason for it. Yeah, it was you, like, only, oh. you could only eat half the bag. Right. <laughs> well, it, it's like, I'll, I'll have a Cheeto and I'll have some ice cream. I don't need them those those together. That sure, was I'll like, have them one after another too, but. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I've done like like, the, like a Frosty and Fries, like that's acceptable. That's good. Yeah. So I could see where like kettle chips mix may be okay, but I'm still going no go on that too. Well, my gateway my gateway uh -oh. snack to, to bring me to the Cheetos ice cream mixture was hard pretzels. Okay, that, that's a, I can see that gateway. Like a Snyder hard pretzel with ice yeah. cream. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, you could even use like the pretzel rod like as a spoon. Right, that's, that's what I think was my first, my first go at it, yeah. And then you just went hardcore after that. Well, I was trying different kettle chips. I was trying kettle chips and I, did, I mean, I haven't done this in, I don't know, maybe four years because I've been trying mm -hmm. to eat a lot better. Right. But uh, but I got Bill to try it, didn't I? You did. <laughs> you did give it a try. You got me to be nauseous for a good five minutes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't that bad. But it was, yeah, I. it was not my favorite thing. <laughs> well, I give, I give a lot of credit to to both of you. Well, you didn't try it. Did you try it, Aaron? No. No, you just, okay. You were just totally grossed out by the thought of I, it. I remain grossed out by it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was so mean, intrigued by the French fries and milkshake thing that I had to try it. <laughs> that, that turned out to be such a great, that's a, such a great combo. Yeah, that is. I, I'm with you on that, Bill. How about sweet potato fries? I do like yep. sweet potato fries. With, with the, with the milkshake. Oh, I haven't had them with a the milkshake before. But I imagine I it's just as good as regular fries. Yeah, yeah. I would think. Oh, my God, I'm hungry now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's so how Bill, fast that works. I, yeah. I ask you, sir. Yes. Kettle bells or kettle chips? Uh, I love kettle chips. I love me some kettle chips uh, because of the, the, the dietary... <laughs> restriction that I need to put on myself, I'm going to say kettlebell. I, I do love a kettlebell, man. That That's such a great workout if you're not powerlifting like some people. Um, it's, I, I was blown away the first time I tried it. And it's like, the only, the only scary thing is um, if you lose it, it becomes ballistic. Like you can put it through a wall. Yeah, can, I can imagine. You know, you're, you're swinging this thing and it's the whole point is, is the, 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 the motion of this 30, it's 35 pounds or 45 pounds. It might, you know, the big ones are 53 or whatever, but the one I was using was I think a 34, 35 pound kettlebell, which should be nothing, but you start swinging that thing around. It depends on the exercise. You can get a great workout yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. they're, they're, it's a, and it's, it's kind of fun and, you can do it in a group or you can do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, the, the scary part for me was, man, if this thing goes flying, everybody duck. Cause. <laughs> so how, where do you stand on open carry kettlebells? Open carry kettlebells. <laughs> hey man, more power to him. That guy's going to fall down during the day at some point. It's just, or his pants are coming down. I don't know. It's just. <laughs> so what, um, what's, 
what style of kettlebell do you like? Do you like uh, an all iron one or do you like the fluorescent one or? I like the all iron or, or the all black, just the single color, mo one piece, mono design. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, they're the ones I have. Yeah. Rogan has a, sells ones with like a gorilla head. A werewolf I, do, head. I, I have seen, what is it? I think it's a death star and a Darth Vader mask. Yeah. I've seen those too. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm Kettlebell. I'm Team Kettlebell myself. Team Kettlebell, so, yeah. all right. I knew you'd both say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we're trying to show off or? <laughs> no, I just, I mean, we well, we've talked about this before, even like together. like mm -hmm. in, So I knew you guys were, enjoyed working out with Kettlebells and you knew I was a power lifter. So yeah. we knew which way this one was going to go. I was going to go for the, the fatty chips and you guys were going to get your little workout in with your little Kettlebells. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe my little 80-pound oh, kettlebell. Down. Okay. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I mean, it's just two different ways to work out, and I'm just, like, not into that type of workout anymore. Like, it's just – I get it. It is a good workout for sure, but it's just boring to me, and I don't like anything that's, like, light. I don't like to do anything any light weights anymore. Right. Okay. Understandable. Yeah. I mean, which I, would, I, sh which I should say also the weights that I do in powerlifting are very light compared to most powerlifters. So I'm like <laughs> total baby powerlifter, but to me, they're heavy. Well, I mean, compared to other women or you're, you're talking about in general, Com right? Uh, but yeah, in general, like I've never won a competition. Okay. I'm pretty well, sure I was last at every competition I've ever been in. I mean, I, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but I'm not comparing you to men powerlifters. I, uh, well, I we, I mean, no, I mean, I, we do the same, same exact lifts, but, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, even in competitions, I'm like never the best one. There's, they're always way better than me. Even the ones that are like lighter than me or older than me, like th that should, that should make both categories not as good as me, but I'm like always the worst one, but those weights are heavy to me. So mm -hmm. like, I, you know, keep trying to get higher and higher, but when I go to something like kettlebells or bands or dumbbells, it just feels like I'm not doing anything because I'm used to lifting, you know, 200 pounds or whatever. So. Well, yeah, your main focus is to lift strength. Uh, yeah. Strength and, right. get, and lift as many. Well, that's where you are right now, but then you're going right. to improve. Yeah. You know, you know, you have so much room to improve and, and, and strengthen yourself. Yeah. So. And it's definitely like a me versus me type of thing, but I totally do want to beat somebody someday in some competition like just one lady like I just want to beat one person I don't care if she's 85 I hope I beat her well I I can safely say that's going to happen if she's okay <laughs> yeah good to dream. make that happen right now right. it's good to dream it's good to dream <laughs> hey, before you do the next one who is it above Mike so I see Jimmy then Mike and then who is that above that's Rogan Joe Rogan oh okay got it I and love above that. Rogan and above Rogan? Yeah, who's that? That is a caricature of a comedian I like. His name is Kurt Metzger. Oh, okay. Thank you. And his, uh, his <laughs> podcast is called Is Can't Get Right. Cool. Which he does right now. It's, you know, like, like this one. It's, it's very Zoom-centric. So. Got it. Can I move on now? You can Aaron? move on now. <laughs> please, Thank you. please, please, please. <laughs> no. We won't have it any, any other way. We're, we're excited <laughs> to have you here, really. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, it's good to see you guys. Oh, it's awesome. It's great uh, to see you. It's awesome to yeah. see myself in Zoom. That's, <laughs> that's, I know how that part I do not like so much. <laughs> <laughs> Glug. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So for the next one, these are um, referring to the two movies that were recently released. The Wonder Woman movie. Or Captain Marvel. Um, yeah, super easy for me. Wonder Woman, like, not no question, um, and not not just based on like movie versus movie. Even though you did say like the movie, um, I did like both movies. But um, when I was like super little, like a kid, I actually started the Wonder Woman TV club. So like me and like two other girls, we would watch the show together and then we would like write up synopsis of the show and then like read them to each other on the phone. 
<laughs> and so like I was obsessed with Wonder Woman when I was when I was a kid. And so I'll always have that soft spot in my heart, but I also thought the movie was just so good. And it was at a time we needed a strong Wonder Woman movie. So I'm with Wonder Woman on this one. Mr. Bill? Uh, <laughs> I loved both movies. But I will go with Wonder Woman because uh, high five. High five. <laughs> it was uh, no, it really was it, it one, it gave DC a punch in the arm or a, you know, a, an attaboy because they had been eating it for a while with their movies. Um, it was amazing. It was a female director uh, making a strong female centric movie. I thought, um, some of the things Aaron said, it kind of just feel good at that, at that time. Yeah. And the, the, uh, soundtrack was pretty amazing. Yeah. I loved it. So, uh, have you seen that video of that, the cello player or yeah, it's a cello, right? Yeah. With this for the movie. It's just, I I'll go find it on YouTube every once in a while just to watch it. Mm -hmm. It's friggin' awesome. I think there's a few different videos that I, that are I was, there. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a few different versions. Yeah. That theme song is, is great. I haven't uh, been excited about a theme song in a lot of years. Like that's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just in general, any kind of uh, movie score, that's such an awesome song. Yeah. So did the, did the theme song put you over the top to choose it? Uh, it put, yeah. Cause it, you like both of them. I like both of them. Um, I, I think if, if, if you want to go, go on a points base, uh, Wonder Woman hit it out of the park in so many different ways. And I'm just a Marvel fan. So, uh, Captain Marvel she's, had, had like well, a leg up. D she's DC, right? Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman's, Wonder Woman's Wonder DC. DC. Yeah. Yeah. So the Captain Marvel movie, just based on the last, you know, 10, 12 years, I was like going into it saying, okay, let's see where this goes. But, but I'm probably going to like it. And I did. And actually it took me a couple watchings of it to really kind of get more out of it. I was, it was just kind of a passive like, Oh yeah, that was good. But have I've since watched it a couple more times and going through and picking out smaller pieces in there that I'm like, Oh, I really, really like this movie. But the first time through was more of a, a passive, like, oh, it's a Marvel movie and they're doing Marvel things and this is kind of cool. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I mean, it's still, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, I'll go, I would go Wonder Woman on this just because it stands alone and the soundtrack and the directing and the story and the, the acting and everything just kind of came together and made it amazing okay so paul do we have a bingo on this one well damn it with, uh oh <laughs> it's, what i said was well <laughs> Jeez. i feel i just i just feel like you're okay go ahead with with captain marvel okay the aspects of that that i liked was you get to see a backstory of Fury, mm -hmm. which I love all that stuff. You get to see uh, Coulson. Right. I remember. And it had, uh, you know, it, like you said, it had all the Marvel trappings, all the Marvel fun stuff, which, which I really enjoyed. And I've only seen it once, and I, I do want to revisit it. I do want to check it out again. But I, I, yeah, I am with Team Wonder Woman. Absolutely. I mean, you know, referring back to what Aaron was saying uh, from the from the original TV series uh, with Linda Carter and that theme song, and then uh, the the I'm sorry, the actress that plays her now. Can Linda anybody? Oh, I was, talking, I was thinking Linda Carter was from the show. Gal, but Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, gorgeous as you, as you can well see, and. It just, yeah, kind of, uh, it just has so much heart to it, you know, and yeah. we were talking about, we were talking about Chris Pine recently. I think he's a great, 
addition to it. Um, that theme song is, like I said, one of the greatest theme songs. It really, it's really inspiring and just, uh, and then when you find out who did it and, and how they recorded it and, yeah. and it's, it's cello, it's not guitar and it's not just guitar, yeah. you know, um, and it just leads into, it just leads into other DC characters. And Hey, th did you guys see the, uh, justice league film? I did not. Yes. I did. You did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously I loved her in that, but I, I just think that's the closest they got to the greatness of like an Avengers movie, the camaraderie, right. uh, the, the banter, you know, and um, actually I think that's, I think that was one of the best portrayals of Batman in a movie. I, you know, I kind of liked it. I kind of liked it more than uh, Chris, Christian Bale's Batman. Ben Affleck's. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. From the fight scenes to uh, Bruce Wayne. You know, I liked his Bruce Wayne too. Um, but yeah, I'm team, team Wonder Woman. And yeah, uh, one. It's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, the new release is, is stalled because of, you know, what we're going through Yeah. yeah. right now. What but, are we going through? Is there something we're... What? Something going on? There's something something okay? with Cheetos and ice cream. <laughs> okay. It's like an epidemic or something. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, public health needs to be consulted on this. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, no that's, that's fine. <laughs> you heard they're releasing the Snyder Cut supposedly next year of Justice League. No, I didn't. No, I didn't hear that. Announced uh, on Twitter, I think. So yeah, supposedly they they've given him back because he had uh, he had to finish it. He hasn't finished the edit. So I don't know what's going. I don't know what's going on. But now I'm interested in seeing that. Oh yeah, I mean I, I'll eat, I'll eat all that stuff up. I just yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I like it all. Um. So moving on. Okay. Another food option. <laughs> Spare ribs or buffalo wings. Now, keep in mind, you can flavor them any way you want. And you can have any side condiment with them that you want. So just keep that in mind. This one's hard for me because I go through these phases where I don't eat any type of meat like that at all. And then I come back to, like, must have ribs and chicken wings so it's not really like a diet or anything like that it's just something like clicks in my head where I'm like well I cannot eat something off of like the bone or whatever so I just freak out so if especially if I don't see the food being made and it's just like served I'm thinking of it like that then I think I lean toward chicken wings okay but like super hot okay spicy okay any yeah. Any other, yeah. any kind of sauce or? Yeah, the super hot kind. Okay. Oh, okay. That's it? Is it called something? I don't know. No, no, no. I'm just mean, there's, there's blue cheese sauce. Oh, no, I don't need any of that. I just want the super hot red stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I don't really like, I don't, like if ribs are an option, I usually don't choose it anyway, but it's not that I don't like them. It's just not usually a choice I would make. I'm going to lose this one, aren't I? <laughs> uh, there's no lose. There's no lose. It's your choice. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, the way I look at like it. Like I said, I, yeah, if you're wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll decide that. <laughs> <laughs> there is no wrong. Fair enough. Answers. I've let you know when you're wrong, so it's fair enough. There is no wrong answers. Oh, I do a lot wrong. <laughs> there is no wrong answers, but if there is, I, 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 I'll let you know. Understood. <laughs> All right. Me? Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to go spare ribs. I, I, I like wings. I'm not a hot wings guy. I never was. And, and that kind of put me off of them because people are always trying to get me to eat hot wings or they come over and say, Oh, these aren't that hot. I'm like, <laughs> I'm allergic to that. I can't <laughs> eat hot wings. This is not a joke. I don't know how else to tell you. I don't want hot wings, regular wings. Fine. Garlic wings. Fine. I'll take spare ribs though. I, I just, 
and I like red meat. So, or that kind of meat, whatever. Is spare ribs? Pork it's or? pork. Well, mo they're mostly pork, but you can have oh, beef, okay. beef ribs, but yeah. What do you uh, put on them? Like barbecue type sauces? Um, I'm, I'm a dry rub. I'm more of a dry rub guy. Growing up in this valley, we have something called Santa Maria style barbecue. And it's uh, salt, pepper, not paprika, uh, salt, pepper, garlic, and uh, I can't remember the other, some herb green thing that gets dried and put in the sauce. And you just sprinkle it on, rub it, and then barbecue that way over oak wood. And that's usually enough flavor. Uh, barbecue sauce, though, is, is good sometimes. I will do, I have a, a nice Hawaiian style barbecue sauce. Which is just a little sweeter than some of the other ones, right? Uh, and that that I'll put that on a lot of things. Does it have like a pineapple in it? It does not have a pineapple in it, and I'm sure it has some pineapple flavoring in it. But That's, I don't know if yeah. whole pineapple. <laughs> These chunks. Exactly. You would almost expect that. Yeah. It's very good. I've used I use it a lot when I'm using the instant pot. Yeah. I have this rub. It's paprika, garlic, and like a like a dehydrated blue cheese. Oh wow! And it's, yeah, it's really good. It's good on wings. I've had it on wings. I've had it on steak. So yeah, it was pretty good. And where do you fall on the uh, spare ribs versus wings? Oh, ribs. <laughs> no contest. Ribs. Yeah, I eat ribs like. I eat ribs like, like those beetles, those flesh-eating beetles. There's nothing left on the bone. Similar to yeah. the Cheetos There's ice cream. Nothing, nothing left. Yeah, it's like a cartoon. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, uh, wings are a close second. I mean, I like the little drumsticks, too. So when I say wings, I mean, like, the little drumsticks, too. I like those, too. Right. The crispier, the better. I don't like them burnt, but yeah, I like the skin a little crispy. I can just eat them with like Frank's hot sauce. And oh, I love Frank's. Yeah, Frank's is good. Frank's is yeah. good. I can put that on anything. Yes, absolutely. Cereal, pancakes. Cheetos. Cheetos, ice cream. <laughs> Whatever. Man, talk, whew, talk about an enema. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. All right. That's gross enough. Well, if you don't have insurance, I mean, you know, <laughs> you do what you gotta do. I like the, uh, the, the Chinese food ribs. They have that, they have like a sweet garlicky flavor to them, man. Or so I don't know what's, I don't know what's in that sauce. You know, it's not the best thing for you, but it tastes so good. It's probably pineapple. It's pine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It won't be bad for your body, but it's good for your soul. So yeah, there you go. It works out. Yeah, as long as you you know you know, you as long as you don't eat too much of it, yeah. right? Then you become a soul, <laughs> and that's it. No body. <laughs> um. Oh, moving on to a more cheerful <laughs> subject: cremation or organ donor. <sighs> Um, my answer is organ donor. I'm not sure anyone wants any of this, but I would, I would rather it be available if it was worth it for somebody else. Um, the thought of it and thinking of it is, um, disturbing and like hard to wrap your mind around. But when it comes to thinking that even if you're, even if like, I feel like everything inside me is all messed up anyway, but maybe it would benefit someone else in some small way or even researching or anything like that. So um, in that way, it's a no brainer to me. I also don't want to put a burden on my family or friends or whoever of being in like an urn forever. And then every time they move or clean, it's like, where do we put Aaron? Like just, <laughs> just, just don't. I don't need to be carried around or sprinkled over some location they think I liked because I mentioned it one time in the 90s. Like, I don't want that. Put you on hot wings? Yeah. I, I think Aaron wants to be sprinkled in the lobby of the Millennium Biltmore. <laughs> oh. Hey, but those were good times, though. <laughs> those were <laughs> Like, that actually wouldn't be so bad. 
I would love haunting that place. Mm, it's, it's already haunted. I know. I I'm know. Sure I saw th some things down the hallway. And yeah. Well, at the, um, at the pod fest that year, when I um, went to um, my favorite murder, they, the story they were telling was about um, the Biltmore and the incident that happened happened on the floor. I was, staying on so all night i was just like ready to hear or see something <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> mr bill uh organ organ donor absolutely oh i forgot to ask aaron are you, is that on your license or your id um that's a good question i don't know i'll i'll look um, so much for wanting to be an organ donor well, I did, I got my license really late in life, as you know, or maybe you don't know. So I didn't really know how to do any of that. <laughs> where do I find, where do I see that if I am? It would say organ donor on it, on the front. On the front? Then I guess I'm not. Oh, okay. The California ones used to have a little red dot, but I don't know what they do but now. But it expires. There's a lot of inaccuracies on this license, like. My weight is definitely not the same, so they have ex expiring at the at the right time. <laughs> so when I renew it, I'll I'll get it set and I'll show you that I did. Okay, because it expires this year actually. Ooh, if they'll even let you into the DMV, that's the problem we're having here. Oh, that's true. I think by then, I I live in Indiana. They don't care about anything. <laughs> that's your state motto, right? I think it's like on the. Don't care about anything. Yeah, no, there was actually, there's actually a billboard at the Michigan border that's totally calling out Michigan, like, uh, Michiganders, please come and enjoy our free roam state. Like, it's actually a billboard on the border. So, yeah, I'll be able to renew my license easily. Indiana. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Put more butter on your corn. It's fine. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm in now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's how we get you. I'm back. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so bill you're an organ donor organ donor it says so on my license and uh i w i also am a uh proponent of cremation so take out what you need burn the rest and oh so you can do both yeah i think so oh. i don't see why not that was a question i had yeah um the other thing was i'm i'm actually looking into i saw it one time a long time ago somewhere online and I have not been able to find it again. There was a place that was, they were promoting at least taking the body and basically bundling it with other types of earth and stuff. And basically you become a tree. There's a tree at the top of it and they bury the whole thing. And then there's a private garden somewhere where they're going to grow these trees and, and never to be disturbed, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if I was, I dreamt that somewhere in my head or if I saw it somewhere online, but I've never seen it since hmm. I have seen the ones where they can take your cremated remains and use that to grow a plant or a tree or something like that. And I think I would be more into that. So do you, do you want to be cremated or I do. You're just, I'm sorry. I do. Oh, you do. Okay. I want to be cremated. I don't, I'm not into the whole box in the ground and the whole blah, blah, blah. If anything, you know, barbecue me, take me to the end of the pier, throw me off, off the pier in Pismo and, or sprinkle me at the end of the pier. Cause I, that's just as good as anywhere else. I mean, it's nice for people to have a place to go and visit. So if people have to go out to Pismo and go to the end of the pier, I'm okay with that. But I, I don't need, I don't need to take up any more space when I'm gone. I took up enough space when I was alive. So. Well, I am an organ donor and uh, I want to be mounted. <laughs> Stuffed and mounted. I know a guy. Okay. I know and a guy. Here's, who does. here's the space right here. There's the space right next to My earbuds. Head. Yeah. <laughs> Is it just the head or the whole body? You want an action figure kind no, of just, thing? Or? Just the head, like a deer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. With sunglasses, not these. Okay. I'm, okay. You know we're going to put antlers on you, though. <laughs> I won't care. 
like a headband. Yeah, just as long as like my a headband. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just slap them right on. Yeah, like like at a drunken Christmas party, like a drunken <laughs> work Christmas party. Yeah. Except uh, for we're gonna gorilla glue them to your head. Right, but you oh, got to put them on crooked. Oh, like, yeah, like this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let me take a picture. <laughs> I want to get this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To you know, take whatever used parts you can use. Um, and I, I don't know if I specifically want to be cremated, but yeah, I don't want a lot of fuss made over my non-functional body anymore. You know I mean, yeah. I mean, if if it could, you could use as much as you can for for donation or for science or whatever. Yeah, just take it, use it up, cut it up. Yeah. I don't want a big ceremony. I don't really. But the thing with that is it's not really about what you want at that point. It's about what the people that like that are grieving want and what's yeah. going to be better yeah. for them. So unless you like put that in writing and in you know, a will or whatever, like you don't really get a say at that point. Yeah. I don't want Yeah. Well, it's like you said, you don't want to be an inconvenience. Right. But yeah, like if there are some people that care enough to want to honor you in some way, it's yeah, I guess they're going to do it, you know. Yeah, I don't want to be an inconvenience in terms of like having an urn in my ashes and like people have to like figure out where that goes and all that. But when it comes to a ceremony after, I just know like when anytime I've dealt with something like that, that has definitely been a good step in processing the grief and I would hate to deprive yeah. other people of that. Um, so yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of the celebration of life. Yeah. That seems to be the thing now. And as, as the decedent, uh, I would request that everyone wears bright colors and a kilt if possible. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But without the kilt, then at least the bright colors <laughs> or because that, yeah, that is what those things are for. It's for the people who are left processing their grief. Yeah. And I hope there's a bunch of them and I hope they're really sad, <laughs> but the three people that show up. I'd say I'd be there, but I'm sure I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. Remember oh, I'm sure old... I'll go before both of you. <laughs> Remember how old we are. I know. That's true. Or how old I am. I don't know. <laughs> the cars. You don't know the cars? Come on. I don't. I've never even heard of them. It, it hurts. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you. I know it's not intentional, but the cars were like, it, this is an exaggeration, but the cars were like the Beatles of the 80s. The Beatles? I mean... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they were like the new kids on the block of the eighties. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> now we're making some sense. I oh. should have known. I should have known. Absolutely, the you should have known. The, the cars and the and and the the knack what must have sounded like Beethoven. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not joking. I really did call my mom and dad right after getting that text. No, I, oh, I know. Like, I, I really did call them. And I'm like, I think these might be bands from like your era, but I don't know. So can you tell me? Cause I have to have an answer for this in about a week or so or whatever. Yeah. But like any, like any generate, like even in the eighties and a little bit of the nineties, the, you know, the fifties and the sixties were popular. That music, like any movie, any like large movie that has a soundtrack from a past time, those songs have a resurgence. Like in uh, in uh, Gardens of the Galaxy, it's all those seventies oh, yeah. hits now, are a bit you know are a big deal. And like young kids know all those seventies songs, you know. So. Um, okay, so for the final one, okay, the seasons, autumn or spring. Okay, I think it's like. Um... I don't know, cross between adorable and fancy that you say autumn <laughs> instead of fall. It's precious. I just like, I like, I like that word. I like that name for a woman. I think it's a pretty name for a woman. Next on the stage, autumn. Yeah. And that's, and that's, by we brought up that, that's a stripper's name. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think a great stripper name would be facetious. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even going to tag onto that. Um, so I would go with fall because I'm not as fancy as you. Um, I do like fall, although growing up, I never had any type of seasons because I'm from Miami. So it was just pretty much like summer and then hurricane season. Those are your <laughs> options. Well, I didn't know that. I knew, I didn't so when know I came from Miami. Yeah, yeah. So when I came to Indiana, um, that was like the only redeeming quality it had um, and still kind of has. Um, it's neat to see the trees turn colors and the leaves dropping and the way the temperature, you know, does provide for outdoor things, but you're not putting on a winter coat and freezing. Um, yeah, I, re I do like fall a lot. It's, it's one of the only things that kept me in Indiana. It was nice to see a season change like that. Whereas spring to me is just kind of like, I don't know, like a wimpy version of summer with more rain. So I don't know. I don't, I don't see the appeal of spring at all. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm more of a winter guy. So these are, neither one of these is a great choice for me. Um, well, that's not part of your choices, Bill. I yeah, it sounds know. like an election. Man. You're harsh. Deal with it. <laughs> harsh like winter, Bill. Harsh like winter. Harsh like winter. Which is not an option. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, a very good friend of mine likes fall. So I'm going to say. Me? Fall. I just said that. Yes, I know. That's, <laughs> I'm your very good friend. <laughs> you're, my, you're my very good friend. I'm going to say fall. Um, I, I like the, uh, it doesn't snow here. Uh, and we get 80 degree days in November. So we've had 80 degree days on Christmas day. So, uh, the hope that it's going to cool down the possibility of rain. And I, I think I like the possibility of fall like weather, uh, the hopefulness of it, of an autumn kind of thing. Because we don't usually get that here. We can we can get a cold day in the middle of summer, and we can get an eighty degree eighty degree day at Christmas. Yeah. So, yeah. But fall is the only thing. The only thing I don't like about fall is the time change. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> and but that's, that's where thing. you get the extra hour, though. Yeah, uh, the spring bullshit is where you lose it. The spring bullshit, though, the days are getting longer. The days are getting longer. It's like this time of year. It's like, it's just like, man, it's almost like 13 hours of 14 hours of sunlight <laughs> that, that as the days are getting shorter and shorter in the fall, that's the only thing I don't like that. I do like about spring is the days are getting longer. Hmm. Hmm. Well, for me, I like a fall day. Hey, we bingo to another one. That is my favorite hey. time of year. Two bingos. It's my favorite time. 15. <laughs> High 15. High 15. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, cause it's close to, it's close to Thanksgiving. It's, uh, close to Halloween. Uh, I love a, a sunny brisk fall, autumn, <laughs> however you want to call it day. I mean, if you're going to say sunny and brisk, you might as well say autumn. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite my favorite time. And I, you know, I grew up with that, that season, you know, I, ne I, ne I never went from, uh, never went from some summer to winter or, you know, constantly summer to not, not so summery, you know, like, uh, yeah. like Bill has and you had in, in Miami. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, falls, yeah, falls, falls the way to go for me. Agreed. Okay. So, Erin? Yes. Do you have some more time? Uh, sure. No one's told me I have to go yet, so that's good. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I just want to bring to your attention this. Yes. Which was sent to me by Erin. And this is one of my favorite pictures ever. And it's from the Podfest, Bill. And yes. You're, you're in it. You remember the picture. Right? I remember the picture, sort of. And, and seen that I know yet. I keep sh I know I keep showing it. And she sent me the, a really heartfelt note, and I, and you Aww. know, without sounding all kinds of sappy, I really appreciate this little detail. It's nice. 
You know, it was very considerate to take the time to send me something like this because this was a special time in all our lives, I think, that we really, we really liked this time. It was a very special time. Yeah. It really was. Um, and I'm just like forever grateful to like Graham and Chris and Dave and all those guys that did that because it was really cool to come together with people that I never would have even had known before and such a separate part of my my daily life that I was able to indulge in and enjoy for so many years. It was sad to see it end, but um, kind of good timing in a way. And I'm grateful that we've stayed connected through all this time as well. And getting to see, you know, earbuds together at a fest and I mean, my lunchbox getting signed by Joey oh, McIntyre. I mean, so, <laughs> which actually is right above me, but, um, but yeah, that, so that whole time uh, from first, for me, first from comedy film nerds into the LA pod fest and, and all the, various events through, through the years. You, you don't have a problem different. worrying about where you're going to put the, the lunchbox. Like, you, <laughs> well, it better go next about, to my, if I'm in an urn, it better go next to the lunchbox. What's that? If I'm ever in an urn, it better go next to the lunchbox. In fact, burn it with me. Yeah. Or put you in the lunchbox and that'll be <laughs> There your, we go. Perfect. Put you in the lunchbox. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, that's gross. That's gross. <laughs> than Cheetos and ice cream. <laughs> They're both gross. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you got it. Well, Aaron, she also wrote me a great note. And I'm going to read the note. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's how I feel about reading the note. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Thought you'd like to have your crew with you as you record more podcasts. I'm in your corner. Thanks, Aaron. Even though you clearly don't recognize the talent and awesomeness of Joey McIntyre, for which you are wrong, by the way. I don't know where all this hostility is coming from. Oh, I do. I mean, I, <laughs> I, never, I never said that I thought he was untalented, that he's, he's not a, a great musical talent, that he's not- You chose a baby kangaroo over him. So- Look. In the, in the, I had no idea there were going to be. You have a good point. Look, you have a good point because I know he means so much to you. First of all, he's no Justin Timberlake, okay? All right. But you have a good point. <laughs> well, I thought that would get a, a bigger laugh. Uh, Slam my computer <laughs> shut. Dude, dude, I'm staying out of this one. You're going down in flames on your own. <laughs> Bill's, Bill's watching a train wreck. <laughs> Enjoy, Bill. Enjoy. My train wreck, yeah. It was really cool uh, getting to LA and Sanai was coming in at the same time. And Graham had texted me like kind of sharply, like do not try to find her at the airport. Like, because they were going to film us meeting. And but yeah. then guess what that made me want to do? <laughs> find her at the airport. So I'm like looking around at like every person coming off a plane and thinking, which plane is she on? But I didn't find her. Did and you then know what she looked weird like? Filming, meeting her because she was at the top of the stairs in that little room when you those like windy stairs they had oh, in that right. hotel. She was at the top, like, and I was coming in with Graham, and then he was gonna take me up and introduce me. And of course, they were filming the whole time. Well, we get close to the door and we're having like conversation, and um, we're almost about to walk in, and the sound guy or whatever is like, "Oh, uh, can you go back and do that again?" There was like a bird or a motorcycle or whatever, and I'm like, "Do what again?" And I'm like, "Can you go back to your car and walk to the door again and have the same conversation you were having?" And have this spontaneous, heartfelt moment again. I'm like, "Do you want to play it back for me?" I don't know what I just said. <laughs> like, <laughs> first of all, I'm nervous. Second of all, not an actor. Yeah. But so then we got. I think. So was, then on take thirteen. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was going to say, I think it was three or four where we got yeah. all the way to the stairs and then still had to go back. And then finally I got to go up to the stairs and meet her. Oh. And it was weird to kind of know that people are watching this, but that it was such a powerful moment to me to finally meet her. It was, I mean, I, I couldn't have dreamt that that would really happen in real life, but it's so cool now that I can see it. I can relive it. I can watch it. And it's so special to get to see her see her on the screen meeting her but then having met her in real life more than once is 
extra cool. Very nice. Yeah. yeah I, I, I kind of, I wasn't there obviously for that, but knowing you both being there at that, uh, that year's shows and getting to meet both of you, it was, it, it is kind of, uh, memorable every time. And I, I, I'll, I was just going to say, you start a little run when you see her yeah. and that, I, I don't know why that always catches my eye when you're, when you're coming down the hallways and then when you see her, you kind of, and I don't know if it's a run or just kind of <laughs> the excitement of it. The, 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 yeah, just the excitement. Moment, yeah. The that moment really comes through. Yeah, I felt, and I think the way the, them stopping and starting and stopping and starting kind of made me even more like ready to just like get yeah. to see her when I finally could. And it was, that was, it was, it was very exciting. And then cool. I got to see her in Japan as well. So when they showed the movie in Japan, I got to go out there and nice. hang out with her and her family. And it was amazing. Although there was one point when uh, the first year when we were still miked and the cameras were there, but we were at like a long table in some brunch place and we were all eating, like all the crew and Graham and whoever, like we were all eating. And she and I were sitting by each other and we were like just talking casually because we were aware of being filmed. And then we were the last two at the table and they were all kind of trickling out and leaving. And so we both were like, oh, we can finally like really talk. And so we were talking like, like really deep and like, you know, really big topics and saying things we felt more open and easier to say and having just a really good conversation. And it was just amazing. Like, like two sisters that had found each other after so many years. It was awesome. And then we're leaving. And one of the sound guys goes, you, you guys know you're still mic'd, right? I was like, oh, edit, undo, delete, what? You already signed the waiver. <laughs> yeah. Right? Fortunately, nothing, nothing that we said got in that was, you know, what, that we wouldn't have you call, or whatever. You but Graham? it was a panic moment. What'd you call Graham? <laughs> what? What did you call Graham? Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. Oh, we're, we no, I didn't. Recording. I don't think I did. I don't think we're, I said anything bad about Graham. We're not recording right now, Aaron. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> What's that? Is that red light, light still blinking? No. <laughs> no. No. Let's cover it up. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, it was cool. I do have to get going. I'm getting some texts and it keeps no. popping up. But before no. I go, I want to show you though. Uh oh. You can see it. I don't know if can you see it. Which one is it? I see the kitten hands. Yep, there it is. On the it, lunchbox. It be. Yeah. Here's the Pardo. Yeah. Here's the Teddy. How old <laughs> how old is that Teddy? Um, that one is eighteen years old. Does he does he have a name or she? I don't remember the Teddy's name, but it says "I love you, mommy." Um, from when she was my daughter was two, and she's turning twenty. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, we got to get into that uh, next time. Okay. That you, you visit <laughs> us. Yeah, this was great, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad I got to come. Thank you for inviting me. It's so good to see you guys and chat with you guys. It's all the good all the good times come come rushing back. Yep. So good to see you. Mm. Yeah. All right. Bye, you guys. Bye. Take care. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Uh, Whoa, God, I'm glad she's gone. I'm not. Man. Uh, I was so, still holding it in. I can't stand her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. How do you do it, Bill? You're a saint. You're a saint. Well, yeah, that's true, but. Oh, my God. Man. You're a terrible liar. <laughs> oh my God. You're a terrible liar. <laughs> oh. how, how long have we gone, man? This is this is a long one, it seems like. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've we've only gone fifteen minutes. It just feels like three hours because she wasn't she was involved. You're gonna give her a complex, man. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Uh, well, that was fun.